When Sega found out that Atari was coming out with a new console, they came up with a console of their own to compete against it. So, how did they do? I am the Game Collector and this is Second Opinion Games. And today we put the Sega 32X versus the Atari Jaguar in a showdown. Second Opinion Games. Afterburner is probably the most iconic arcade game of its type. It's one of those high flying, fast shooting, blowing everything up style of game. In the arcade, it was pretty darn awesome with that giant cabinet that you would crawl into, feed about a dollar and change into, and then blow up after 15 seconds. When they brought it to the 32X, they kept it. Pretty much the exact same. You have the awesome rock and roll in the background. You still have to fire your missiles and take out tons of airplanes. And it's really easy to die here too. And when you do die, it is definitely awesome to see how it explodes. This is definitely a sweet super scaler with terrific colors and insane sound effects. The 32X really did this one right and I really like playing it every single time I turn on that system, which is one of the only reasons to turn on that system, believe me. The Jaguar had blue lighting for the Atari Jaguar CD. Now before you get on my case for adding the Atari Jaguar CD in this mix, well it didn't really add any horsepower to the system itself, it just let it use the optical disc to hold a little bit more memory. So all the hardware is actually being performed by the Jaguar. That being said, it doesn't look nearly as good as Afterburner. The colors aren't as crisp, matter of fact they're very dull. But this is still a far more playable video game. Matter of fact, it's meant for the home console, so you're not getting five minutes of enjoyment out of it. Instead, you're getting hours. There's actual missions to go on, and then when you complete those missions, more missions open up. If you happen to lose your plane, that plane is gone for good. You could unlock different planes as you play through the game, giving you lots of interesting aspects to really thoroughly enjoy. And there's some awesome CG cutscenes, sprinkled throughout. It is a terrific game through and through. Is it as good as Afterburner 2? Well, it depends on what you're really into. If you want the high flying fast action, well then the 32X is your console. If you want something a bit slower and that will take your time and you will spend hours on, well then the Jaguar CD really came through. On this one, it's a tie. Doom on the 32X is this shooter that your parents didn't want you to play, and that made you a bad boy for picking it up. You have your pistol, your shotgun, and your machine guns, and lots of other weapons as you beat back the army of demons from, well, you know where. Defeating these demons with the weapons are more satisfying than ever. It feels like they pack an extra little punch in this game, probably because it's actually harder to hit anything using the Sega Genesis control pad to move your character around. I'm not saying the controls are bad, they're actually quite good. What is kind of bad is the colors and outright graininess of the picture. Also, you're playing in a much smaller playfield window, and it just doesn't feel that quite right. If we switch over to the Atari Jaguar, you'll see that the picture looks a lot better here. The weapons aren't as powerful, but it's still a little bit easier to control. It's still a little dark because, after all, it is Doom. It's far more playable, the frame rate is more consistent, and it's just a terrific game here. However, you're missing that awesome Doom music, which a lot of people really tend to hate. But if you really want to creep yourself out, well then play in the dark in the middle of the night, and then when you hear one of those demons sneak up behind you, holy crap, you'll nearly take a dump in your pants. This is a terrific game, and you could even do System Link. Now, this Sega CD slash 32X console could definitely not do System Link because who has that many plug outlets in their house? Probably no one. Jeez. The winner goes to the Jaguar. 
Motocross Championship for the 32X is the ultimate dirt biking game. At the start of a race, you'll see everyone just smash into each other in the most awkward form possible. So it's better to just stop, let everyone smash, and then drive around the cluster F of what the ever the heck's going on. And then you'll see that this game is pretty much broken, because you'll be in first place, not slip up a single time, and then your opponents will slowly just start passing you by. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Sometimes I could make it around without even touching anything or losing any speed, keeping my fingers on the gas at all times, and still I lose. On top of it, you're playing in a small window box, and this game just seems really poorly developed. Also, I get really motion sick from all the up and down that seems to be going on, and I think I'm ready to vomit. However, I might vomit more after looking at the Jaguars entry, Supercross 3D. Do you like that frame rate? Well, it's running about 10 frames per second. You can get used to it, but why would you want to subject yourself to playing it that much in order to get used to it? Also, the controls of your motorcycle isn't the best. However, you could also figure those out. If you tap the gas, making your way around corners, you'll pretty much never fall off, which means if you do good racing, you could actually win every single race here fairly easy as long as you take the time to learn the maps, and get used to that frame rate. Which, by the way, I think this is the game that people point to when they say how much the Atari Jaguar sucks and how it couldn't do 3D that well. Well, they probably could have polished this game up a lot more. And if they did and expanded upon that frame rate, well, I'm sure it would have been a beautiful game. As of now, it's barely playable. However, barely playable is still a little more than nauseous inducing that the 32X version had. So... Sadly, I'm going to give the Jag the win here, but in reality, no one wins if you're playing this. NBA Jam for the Sega 32X. It doesn't have Charles Barkley in this game at all, so I'm always at a loss to which team I'm gonna pick. It looks kind of like the Sega Genesis version, only the colors have been increased a little bit, and the picture quality has been amped up just the slightest bit. The controls, however, are about the same, so if you're used to playing on the Genesis, you're probably gonna love it here. The graphics are fairly good for the system, but definitely not pushing it to its absolute limits. If we look at the Atari Jaguar version, you'll see some actual sprite scaling going on with the character models, and it's just a lot more fun. On top of it, there's a lot more cheat codes going on, so you could unlock a lot more cooler stuff if you happen to take your time to look those up. Also, it seems to be a little bit more playable and not as unforgiving with the difficulty, and the music is slightly different from the the arcade version, which some people say it's actually better. And overall, I think this is a terrific NBA Jam experience, and it's pretty much well known for being the best version of NBA Jam outside of playing it on the actual arcade hardware. Primal Rage on the Sega 32X is here, the ultimate Mortal Kombat slash Street Fighter 2 clone fighting game ever. Now I can never seem to do any of the fatalities in any Primal Rage game because I can never figure out the controls that well. In this game, I can't even do a single special move. And also, there is a lot of slowdown going on. However, your characters do look big and beautiful and the backgrounds are absolutely absolutely gorgeous. It's really using that 32X color palette well, and it's a mildly playable game. And I mean mild. It's probably best played with a friend. Over on the Atari Jaguar CD system, we also got Primal Rage. Everything's a bit darker. It doesn't have the vibrant color palette that the 32X had. Your character models are much smaller here too, which means that the fighting aspect is just sort of rough a little bit, I think. However, it doesn't have the vicious slowdown that 32X version did, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have no slowdown. I could even pull off a couple of special moves on occasion, but that's about it. Now, seeing that you have to buy the really darn expensive Jaguar CD game, and this is one of the most expensive Jaguar CD things out there, I really cannot recommend this one to anyone because it's barely playable. And 
Honestly, the 32X one's not that much better, but because I like the graphics a little bit more on Sega's console, we'll give the win to the 32X. T-Mech is one of the most interesting games on the 32X. It reminds me of a game called Battle Wheels on the Atari Lynx, only stripped down and a lot easier. Now this one pretty much is just drive your hover tank around, run up on your enemies as fast as possible, unload all of your ammo into them, blow them up, get a little bit of armor back, and rinse, cycle, repeat. There are plenty of different levels to cruise around on, and even different missions as you play through the game, and it's pretty much the same thing all the time though just maybe one time you have to focus in on one type of tank or maybe you have to kill everybody what makes this game super interesting well how about the fact that it was made by atari corporation themselves that's right at the same time atari had their own console they went and made a unique game for a competitor's platform that is just mind baffling However, they did it, and they did it with Battle Tanks, which means our game to compete against it on the Jaguar is Hover Strike. Now, Hover Strike's gameplay is very similar to the T-Mech. You play as a hovering tank, blowing a whole lot of stuff up. However, there's actually mission structure here, which means you could complete the mission and move on and have a variety in the missions that you can complete. Cycling through different weapons and as you pick them up are easy as can be. The controls are a little bit better, but keep in mind you're controlling a tank that hovers, so sometimes you're going to drift off in one direction. Luckily, there's a brake button which will stop you in your tracks and then puts you on the right course. Now there is a Hover Strike CD, which is pretty much just an expansion of this game, and they fixed the controls and the frame rate, but that's not the game I'm looking at to compete against t -Mac. You know what? This one still takes the win, even though it looks ugly and also plays in a small playfield window, it's still a lot of fun. And you can play two player with one person driving and the other person as your gunner. It's kind of fun if you get used to that frame rate and the win goes to the jack. Virtual Racing for the 32X is their premier racing title. Instead of having three courses like the Genesis version, it has all five. You also have three different cars that you could pick from in these very familiar maps from the arcade version. The colors are bright and colorful. Everything about this game feels nearly arcade perfect. However, you don't have a steering wheel in front of you. No, you got the Sega Genesis D-pad. And that sort of does its job just fine. There's also plenty of camera angles to choose from, so you can find the one that's just right for you. This is just a really fast action type of game that is great to pop in and have a great time with almost any time. Over on the Atari Jaguar CD, we have World Tour Racing with a frame rate that's not so good. Also, this is definitely one of the most rare Atari Jaguar games out there. And if you can manage to score a copy, well, then you'll be treated to a really long campaign mode. And trying to get first place is actually challenging. Sometimes you have to run into a wall in order to make a sharp corner, so it's sort of a tactical thing. I really like the graphics, but the game doesn't exactly run smooth. There's also a course editor mode, which makes you create your own courses. However, without a save functionality here to save your courses, it ends up being a bit of a waste of time. This isn't a bad game, it's just that Virtual Racer is so much better. BC Racers on the 32X has been ported to like every system out there and it looks the best right here. However, it probably plays the best on the Sega CD, so I recommend picking up that version instead because the controls here feel really darn slippery. And because I'm using the same controller on both systems, I know it's not the controller itself. I like playing as this big guy with this cute blonde on his shoulder and it's a fighting game. You think she would be driving while he does the punch 
punching, but no, she does all of the punching. Also, there's this one map where you turn on your headlights, and it just makes it really hard to play. Usually, I hang back and follow other people so I know where the corners are because I don't want to take the time to learn any of these. But the graphics are really cool, the frame rate runs at an acceptable amount, and this is a fairly good kart racing style game if you're really into the kart racers. On the Atari Jaguars, we have something extra special with Atari Karts. This is Atari's version of Mario Kart. Now you can turn on or off the hills here while you're playing, and they don't actually do anything, which just makes me a little bit motion sick to play like this, but I thought it might show you a little bit of depth that the game actually has. There's weapons and different item effects that you could pick up on the map itself. There's lots of different maps, even though some of them sort of look like they repeat with the background similar to Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo. There's also no character balancing here whatsoever. You have the best guys, and those best guys have to be unlocked through lots of gameplay. I completely beat this game, which means I have the best guys, which means I can come in first place nearly any time from here on. You could even use the six button pad that the Atari Jaguar had to make corners a little bit sharper, and I actually picked my controller up just to play and beat this game. So this is probably the best Mario Kart that isn't Mario Kart in the Super Nintendo style. So the winner goes to the Jag again. Star Wars Arcade was a system seller at the time. It was heavily used to promote the system. It would always be in magazines and on the box art and just all over the place. It had a Star Wars theme where you would shoot down TIE fighters and get into epic dogfights. And when I started playing the game, I found out those epic dogfights were pretty much just hit the brake, let the TIE fighters fly past you, and then shoot them down again and again and again. Even the Death Star itself doesn't really feel that fun to play against because you always have to kill a number of TIE Fighters and then move on to the next thing. Heck, even these Star Destroyers, you don't actually shoot them down like I kind of want to. Instead, they're just sort of there as obstacles and screen decoration. So it's really quite sad when I play this game in hindsight. As hyped as I was for at the time, it doesn't live up to all that box art and press. The Jaguar had to compete with this Battlesphere Gold, which was a homebrew game that came out in 2002. Yeah, there are still people making homebrew games for the system to this very day, and this was one of the first ones. You could also system link a crap ton of Jaguars together if you could track down a couple of copies of this game that cost about $1,000 a piece. And controlling your fighter in this game, which by the way, there are quite a few to pick from, is as simple as it could possibly get, given the fact that the Atari Jaguar controller has like 25 freaking buttons on it, and each one of them tend to do something different in this game. The radar system is the very best radar system I've probably ever seen. Manipulating your ship in a 3D environment is as easy as can be, always finding enemies is as simple as putting the dot on your crosshair and flying towards it. Controlling your ship is a lot easier than you might think, considering that the controller had no analog sticks. Instead, they made this work with one single D-pad. This ends up being one of the best games for the system by far. There's lots of different modes to choose from. You could have like a horde mode where it just send waves of enemies at you, or you could take on the entire empire defending your star base. This is a terrific game and probably one of the best homebrews to ever be created. So overall here, guys, when you put the 32X with its handful of titles against the Atari Jaguar against its handful of titles, well, the Jaguar is probably going to come out on top. But that's probably because the 32X just played sucked. Let's face it here, guys. After today, I'm probably never going to play it again, and I might just shoot it with my Sega 32. It's a type of shotgun, by the way. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Oh!
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it. And if you want me to do a part two on this, you must have something wrong. But I probably do have enough games and enough energy to do so. So if you want to see like Ultra Vortex versus Mortal Kombat 2, I might just do that for you guys. So let me know in the comments down below. And until later, I will see you again, guys.